Ikam. Hmm. Ah, tak perlu. Ya, yeah, we have the corporate, the, the university corporate video and the multi corporate video. Yeah. Now, about your speech, do you have any slide or you just? No, just I'll speak. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen Welcome uh, to the opening ceremony of International Conference on Religion, Culture and Governance in the Contemporary World We will inshallah begin our opening, uh, ceremony shortly And I would like to uh, remind all uh, respected guests to actually kindly switch off your phones And later on, upon the arrival of our VIP to kindly stand up and remain standing later on for the national anthem. Thank you very much.
Again, brothers and sisters, welcome to the conference. And I would like to again remind each and every one of you to maybe kindly switch off your phones. Okay, and upon arrival of our VIPs, please stand up and remain standing for the national anthem. After all come, mm -hmm. then would be ah. nak dekat nanti bila announcing that rival tu dia automatic lah tu trigger
Brothers and sisters, I would like to again welcome all of you to the conference and I would like to remind each and every participant to kindly switch off your phones to silent mode. And later on, upon the arrival of our VIPs, all are requested to kindly stand to welcome all the VIP guests. Thank you. Please give me the cue and I will start.
We will insyaAllah begin the conference shortly. Brothers and sisters, please rise. Announcing the arrival of Her Excellency, Dr. Merve Safar Kavakci, Ambassador of the Republic of Turkey and member of IIUMBOG, accompanied by the VIPs. Her Excellency, distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, kindly remain standing for the national anthem of Malaysia, Negaraku, followed by the IAUM song leading the way. future share the wisdom to the 
the spirit of his love, revelation and reason, shall excel, shall prevail, merging faith and knowledge with the Khalifa. Thank you. You are all kindly invited to take your seats. Her Excellency Dr. Merve Safa Kavakci, Ambassador of the Republic of Turkey and Member of the IOM Board of Governors. Honorable University Management Committee. Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Qayyum, Dean, Kulia Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. أستاذ الدكتور محمد عبد القيوم عميد كلية معارف الوحي والعلوم الإنسانية. Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Kudus, Convener of the International Conference on Religion, Culture and Governance in the Contemporary World ICRCG 2018. الأستاذ المشارك دكتور عبد القدوس مدير المؤتمر العالمي للدين والثقافة والعولمة والحوكمة. Distinguished keynote speakers, honorable sponsors, participants, members of the media, brothers and sisters, الإخوة والأخوات. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. سلام الله عليكم ورحمته وبركاته. And very good morning. وصباح الخير. On behalf of the organizer, we wish to extend our warm welcome to Her Excellency, all distinguished guests and participants to the International Conference of on Religion, Culture and Governance in the Contemporary World (ICRCG) 2018. The International Conference aims to bring researchers, academics, and practitioners together who are actively engaged in both theoretical and practical aspects of religion, culture, and governance. The themes are widely ranged from religions and science, philosophy, language, governance, globalization, up to the theme of economic development. With this, it is hoped that this conference will bring forward the utmost benefits to the advancements of the Ummah. Brothers and sisters, in order for us to gain the blessings of the Almighty for this great event, I would like to call upon Ustaz Muhammad Esfandiyar Dilawar Khan, Deputy Director, Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Mosque, to recite from the Holy Quran, Faliyatafaddal Mashkura. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سندخلهم جنات سندخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار تجري من تحتها تها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا سندخلهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها لهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وندخلهم ظلا ظليلا إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا
Thank you, Ustaz, for the beautiful recitation. Brothers and sisters, we will now together watch the presentation of IIUM corporate video, followed by the video presentation from the Islamic University of Maldives as one of the co-organizer for ICRCG 2018. Please enjoy the video. Selamat datang, ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to the International Islamic University Malaysia, IIUM, your garden of knowledge and virtue. IIUM was officially established on the 20th of May, 1983. It was co-sponsored by the Malaysian government, a number of Muslim governments, and the OIC. The philosophy of the university was inspired by the spirit of Tawhid, leading towards the recognition of Allah as the absolute creator and master of mankind. All disciplines of knowledge should lead towards subservience to this truth. To date, IIUM has produced more than 50,000 graduates, including international students from over 100 countries in the world. IIUM has strong affiliations globally, significantly recognized internationally as a quality and world-class tertiary institution. It not only strives for academic excellence, but for the development of a balanced and integrated personality poised to face the challenges of the 21st century. The main campus, covering 700 acres, is nestled in the rustic district of Gomba, 25 kilometers from the vibrant cosmopolitan capital city of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Accessibility to Kuala Lumpur is easy, by bus, taxi, and a light rail service. With its elegant Islamic-style buildings, IIUM is blessed with majestic green forested limestone hills and a cool calming river. Nature's wonder of flora and fauna, making it a conducive environment for study. The medium of instruction is English, with Arabic used in courses related to the study of Islamic sciences. IIUM offers more than 150 academic programs in 15 kuliyas and institutes. Two kuliyas unique to IIUM are the Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws, or known as ICOL, and the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, or KIRKHS. ICOL aims to produce judges and lawyers capable of practicing in both the civil and the Sharia court systems. KIRKHS is the largest kulia in the university with over 4,000 students. 
It was formed to integrate human sciences and revealed knowledge disciplines. The Kulia offers courses that bridge the divide between Islamic and secular sciences. Other Kulias of IIUM are Kulia of Economics and Management Sciences, Kulia of Engineering, Kulia of Architecture and Environmental Design, Kulia of Information and Communication Technology, Institute of Education, Center of Languages and Pre-University Academic Development, CELPAD. A home away from home, there are various types of mahala or residential facilities depending on one's need and affordability. A mosque accommodating thousands, two state-of-the-art sports complexes, with Olympic-sized swimming pools, a fully equipped library, a 24-hour medical clinic, a well-staffed child educare centre, banks, post office, restaurants, bookshop, and grocery stores. A fiber optic backbone runs through the entire campus, facilitating easy and instant communication from one far-flung corner to another. IIUM's Institute of Islamic Banking and Finance, Triple IBF, is a center of excellence for education and research in Islamic banking and finance. The Kwantan campus is located on 1,000 acres of land, just like a garden within a valley surrounded by thick jungle. Kwantan is the state capital of Paha. It is famous for its scenic, clean white beaches. This campus is well equipped with state-of-the-art technology for teaching and learning that offers medical science, pharmacy, allied health sciences, nursing, sciences and dentistry courses. Among its notable excellence centers is the IIUM Breast Center, which is devoted to the research and diagnosis of breast cancer. In addition, the Halal Industry Research Center aims to make IIUM the center for reference on halal matters throughout the Muslim world. Currently, IIUM accommodates more than 20,000 students. With accolades of honor, IIUM has carved its name internationally in the field of debate, public speaking and mooting competitions. In 2006, IIUM won the world's best debater award. Since 2008, IIUM has been in the top 20 in the world. In research, IIUM has received numerous recognitions at the regional and international levels by winning gold, silver and bronze medals at various exhibitions and expos, including Panchipta, Inpex, ITEX and Geneva. By inculcating a culture of quality and excellence among the existing workforce, IIUM will continue to be competitive in its mission to make Malaysia a global center of excellence for tertiary education. It will also continue to make significant contributions towards serving the Muslim Ummah.
Thank you for your kind attention. Brothers and sisters, may I now call upon Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Kudus, the Governor of the International Conference on Religion, Culture and Governance in the Contemporary World, to deliver his remark. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Her Ex Excellency Dr. Marbi Safa Kawarchi, Ambassador, Embassy of the Republic of Turkey, and member of the IIUM Board of Governor. Professor Dr. Mohammed Abdul Kayum, Dean, Kulli of Islamic Reveal Knowledge Human Sciences. Distinguished keynote speakers, honorable sponsors, and guests, participants, member of media, brother and sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good morning. Alhamdulillah. The International Islamic University Malaysia, IIUM, is hosting an important and timely international conference on religion, culture, and governance in the contemporary world. The importance of this conference is in two major aspects. First, this conference is the result of collaboration between three international institutions that are the Kulia of Islamic Reveal Knowledge and Human Sciences, KRKHS, IIUM, the International Institute of Islamic Thought, Triple IT, and the International Islamic University, Maldives. We sincerely thank the leaders of Triple IT and Islamic University of Maldives for their generosity and accepting our proposal to join forces in organizing this academic gathering. The second important aspect is its aim, the aim of this conference, I mean, which is to identify the global challenges and opportunities facing our nations and ummah in the critical areas of religion, culture, and governance. Thus, the conference brings together researchers and participants and practitioners who are actively engaged in both theoretical and practical aspects of religion, culture, and governance. I truly hope that 
and believe this conference will benefit us in our endeavors to make the world a better place. I wish to take this opportunity to thank all members of the organizing committee, particularly our patron, Professor Tansri Datu Julkifli Abdul Razak, Director of IIUM, the Chairman of Organizing Committee, Professor Dr. Abdul Kayum, the Dean of KRKHS. Special thanks also go to Emeritus Professor Dr. Datu Wira Jamil, the Director, East and Southeast Asia Region, Triple IT, and Madam Aisha Khalila Abdul Sattar for their generosity and sponsor support to make this conference a big success. Last but not least, to all individuals who have worked very hard in making this conference a reality, may Allah reward you with countless blessings and success in your efforts. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome about 250 scholars and researchers from all over the world to participate and share their knowledge and expertise in this conference. I wish all of you a fruitful academic gathering. Thank you very much. Thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Kudus, for your enlightening speech. Brothers and sisters, next, I am honored to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Qayyum, Dean of Kulias of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, to deliver his welcoming remarks. Faliyatafadal mashkura. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraq al-anbiya al-mursaleen. Wa la alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. High Excellency Dr. Marvi Kavachi, Turkish Ambassador to Malaysia, and member of the Board of Governors of International Islamic University Malaysia. And if I may add as well, she is also an adjunct professor of my kulia. Thank you, Your Excellency, for accepting our invitation at a very short notice, especially for accepting our invitation to officiate this program. Thank you very much. Professor Datusri Said Arabi Aidid, our former rector, Professor Emeritus Muhammad Haji Saleh, Malaysian National Laureate, and also an adjunct professor in our Kulia. Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Kudus, convener of this conference, distinguished keynote speakers, honorable sponsors and guests, participants, members of the media, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning. Ahlan wa sahlan. Salamat pagi dan salamat datang. On behalf of the Kudia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences and International Islamic University Malaysia, it is my honor to welcome you all to this conference on religion, culture, and governance in the contemporary world. First of all, I would like to welcome our international participants to this, to this beautiful Malaysia the land of eternal summer. Tariq Ramadan, a renowned Islamic scholar, once said about Malaysia, Malaysia is a country, of, country unlike any other, full of promise and fragility. Its history, cultural, and religious diversity make it a rich, compelling, and surprising land. Malaysia is unique country, and it is a surprising land indeed, because this is where all the great Asian civilizations have met. This is where the Indian civilization, the Chinese civilization, and the Malay civilization have come together and coexist in harmony. So Malaysia has evolved as a role model for all multicultural societies. It not only houses three major ethnic groups, but there are also 29 tribal societies in Malaysia. And obviously, Malaysia's 
richness lies in its diversity. I would also like to welcome you all to this beautiful campus of ours. It's almost like a garden surrounded by hills and lush green forests. And therefore, perhaps, perhaps one of the reasons why we call this campus a garden of knowledge and virtue. It is a garden. And although we aspire for knowledge, we want to be at the cutting edge of knowledge, we never seek knowledge at the expense of virtue. And one American writer, Saul Bellow, once said that one of the problems of modern civilization is that it has lost its moral center. We believe that that moral center must be restored. Otherwise, it will be consumed by materialism. The title of or the rubric of this conference is Religion, Culture, and Governance in the Contemporary World. Now, you might be thinking that it is a huge title. It's an um, all-inclusive title. Uh, that is because this is a Kulia faculty level conference and our faculty is a mammoth faculty. You'll never come across a faculty like ours because this faculty has 11 departments. And four of the departments focus on Islamic sciences and seven of the departments focus on human sciences. And this faculty was created with a unique vision to integrate worldly knowledge with religious knowledge or divine knowledge. And that is what we are pursuing. We believe that through the coexistence of, of Islamic sciences disciplines and human sciences disciplines, we will try to bring about a harmony between the two. And so I just mentioned that it's a mammoth kulia um, because it has 11 departments, more than 6,000 students, 300 staff, and let me brag a bit. Our kulia, in a sense, was ranked 31 in the world. in divinity, theology, and religious studies. And as I said, we always strive to be at the cutting edge of knowledge. We focus on creation of knowledge. Not, as our rector said, we should not be following, but leading. And we try to lead all the time. And this conference is on religion, culture, and governance in the contemporary world, that's because th these disciplines are interconnected. You cannot have culture without religion. And you cannot have culture without good governance. And I think we have to seriously reflect on the issue of governance, especially in the Muslim societies. I mean, we cannot simply push things under the carpet. We have to accept the reality. And things are not right in the Muslim societies. I think we can see that many of our Muslim countries are in fact turning into failing states for whatever reason. So therefore we decided to focus on this and I hope there will be some serious reflection as to how to restore our civilization again. We have, have we had a very you know, glorious past but what crisis are we going through at this moment that we have to reflect on? So I would want you to feel at home when you are here, and especially for the international guests, please go around and see how beautiful Kuala Lumpur is and how beautiful Malaysia is, and do some shopping as well. <laughs> yeah? Um, that would be good. So finally, I would like to thank you all. I would like to thank our rector, although he's not here, for giving inspiration. Uh, because, you know, every time we invite the rector, 
he tries his best to be with us. And every time he fails to be with us, he will personally write a letter to me saying that he regrets this. Last Friday, we had the Australian High Commission on campus. Because at the moment, we have a group of Australian students from the University of South Australia visiting us. And they will be with us, with the English department, for three weeks. Uh, so they are staying in our mahalla, in our hostels, with our students. Um, and, and they are, uh, you know, so on last Friday, they organized a cultural show uh, together with our students. And um, our, the Australian High Commissioner was there, our rector was supposed to be there, but he couldn't because he had invited some guests before the event, before our invitation was sent to him. So he sent his regrets. regrets. Um, and for this one as well, I think something pressing um, has come up, therefore he can't be here but he has sent his regrets personally and his apologies. I would also like to thank again our honorable keynote speaker and guest, um, High Excellency, for taking the time to come here. I would like to express my gratitude uh, to Professor Emeritus, Muhammad Haji Saleh. He's also one of our keynote speakers. Uh, I would like to thank um, uh, Professor Dato Sri Said Arabi Aitid for being here. I know he maintains a very um, heavy schedule. And I would also like to, of course, thank uh, Dr. Kudus and his team. They have worked very, very hard to bring together these people. <laughs> and I know that, you know, we uh, sit in the same uh, room, Dr. Kudus and myself. Um, and I know that for the last uh, three weeks, he was in the office until nine o'clock at night, just to make sure that our guests are comfortable and everything is in place. So let's give him a round of applause again. <laughs> now, I should also mention, of course, there are many key members of his team. If I don't mention their names, they might be unhappy with me. So let me mention Dr. Fuzi. Uh, Sister Jamia, and who else? And many others, many others. Forgive me if I don't mention your name. Um, so thank you all again for coming uh, from uh, different places. Uh, also, many of our Kulia members are participating. Thank you for your participation. Thank you all, and may Allah bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Qayyum, for the remarkable speech. And now, brothers and sisters, it gives, it gives us great pleasure to invite Her Excellency Dr. Mewe Safa Kafakci, Ambassador, Republic of Turkey, to deliver her officiating address. Faltatafaddal Mashkura. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Assalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulina Muhammadu Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'in, Astaizu Billah, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Wa Yassirli Amri, Wa Ahlul Uqdata Min Lissani Yafqahu Qawli, Sadaqallahu Al-Azim. My dear sisters, brothers in Islam, Dear citizens of this planet, it's a great pleasure to be here among you uh, this morning uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, IIUM is a home, a second home for me. I've been in this uh, country for the past uh, nine months. Um, this is my first time in the region, my first time in Malaysia, my first post as an ambassador. After being a professor of international relations in the west of the western United States uh, 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 for, for decades in Washington, D.C. So there are many firsts in my life. 
However, IIUM and myself, we go back. IIUM has been in my heart, in my mind, for a very long time. Uh, since I was growing up in uh, Turkey and then in the United States, IIUM, through the founding members, a few good men, a few good women, establishing this university, turning this university into a beacon of knowledge to represent what Muslims are supposed to represent, to present there that Islam is a religion of Selm, peace, that Islam covers every facet of life, the theoretical, the practical, the political, the economic, the social, the cultural, and the rest. That there is no positive knowledge or negative knowledge, there is only knowledge. As much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to grasp and comprehend and put into usage. That I knew far away somewhere in the eastern part of the world, there was this university. And that university embraced with open arms the Muslims of Turkey when we were crashed down by secular fundamentalists in our country. Many of our colleagues, our professors, our students sought refuge at IIUM and continued their education and assumed positions, high positions, when they got back. Those years, IIUM uh, was not welcomed in Turkey. The degrees conferred by IIUM were not accepted in Turkey. Very sadly, now as the ambassador here in Kuala Lumpur, I learned that when students from IIUM approach to my embassy in those years, and we're not talking about hundreds of years ago, almost like 10 years ago, five years ago. When they came to my embassy with their IIUM degrees, their degrees were thrown at their faces because the state did not accept them. From there, we reached to a point, alhamdulillah, with my, with my appointment here uh, as a political appointment by President Erdogan. Uh, I knew that I am indebted to IIUM. Triple IT has been a home for me in the United States when I was in self-exile 
as an ex-member of parliament. And I owe my brothers and sisters who have established this university, who were very instrumental in establishing IIIT, guiding us through to lead our groups, to lead our nations, to lead the Muslim world. Um, I'm given a, an officiating remark. If you allow me, with a few changes, I will read that. And uh, then maybe, may I, with your permission, continue to my keynote address? Or uh, do we need to put another event in between? That should be fine. OK, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, please do uh, realize that I'm both an academic and uh, a politician and now a new bureaucrat. So I sometimes have to remind myself, maybe you're not in classroom or you're not in the field as a political activist. Now you're representing a country. Um, and then uh, as politicians, we love to talk a lot. As professors also, we love to chat and talk. So uh, there's a, a double caveat right there. Uh, I hope that uh, I will not bore you. I'll try to be as brief as possible. Indeed, um, my uh, special uh, gratitude uh, and personal uh, thanks uh, go to the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, my dean, as well as uh, uh, our uh, associate uh, professor, uh, uh, and uh, 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 the organizers. Uh, thank you very much for successfully organizing this very important conference on religion, culture, and governance. In the, today's world, uh, the contemporary world. Uh, indeed, again, uh, as uh, now a local, uh, part of uh, KL, as a member of IIUM, uh, as an adjunct professor, uh, I welcome uh, our Malaysian and international participants who are apparently experts in their areas uh, for coming all the way here. Uh, I was at uh, International Islamic University of Maldives, I think, two years ago. For a, for a conference as an academic before uh, my appointment. So welcome to Malaysia. Uh, we look forward to your insights uh, to grasp and tackle the issues of the Ummah uh, with respect to culture and religion and governance uh, uh, in this conference. Uh, yes, uh, our dean has already mentioned that Malaysia is a very attractive destination uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, but IIUM being here as this uh, luminary cradle of knowledge that combines sciences with Islam, not at an apologetic tone makes Malaysia very special uh, for all of us. Uh, Insha'Allah, this conference will raise, increase our knowledge as we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi, Zidni, Zidna, Alman. And allow us also to put our knowledge into practice that Allah will allow us to make the knowledge we will produce here 
nafia. Not just any knowledge, but that the kind of knowledge that we can put forth to the service of humanity, not for any reason, but for the purpose of emri bil ma'roof and nahi anil minkar. With that, if you allow me, I will uh, slowly, smoothly slide into my keynote address. Um, the subject I decided to talk about is enterprising and humanitarian foreign policy. As the ambassador of Turkey, I thought uh, uh, to have a Turkey case study uh, through my remarks uh, would be the right thing to do. Um, of course, Turkey is on our maps at many levels. Uh, we are going through an economic coup attempt as we speak here, as you are all aware. So in the past, Turkey has suffered from coup d'etats through military interventions from within, uh, supported from outside uh, periodically. I'm a child of a 1980 coup. Uh, my parents were both professors when I was growing up in 1970s and trying to juggle in between uh, conserving their religious identities as professors at universities and, uh, and, and deal with the secular fundamentalist tradition of the Republic of Turkey. And then of course in uh, 1990s uh, where I was a political activist uh, in the welfare party uh, of Erbakan um, we suffered under the postmodern coup d'etat, and later under Erdogan's uh, watch, uh, we suffered quite a few of coup attempts, the most recent being the July 15, 2016 coup attempt. Um, but now we have an economic coup attempt, uh, this time around, not necessarily from the forces within, but from the forces outside of the country, as we have already ushered into this new age of shrunk global village of ours, where borders are so fluid that what's inside and outside have all become very inextricable. And despite all of this, the caveatic situation, Turkey um, stands as one country that provides unremitting humanitarian assistance. So how is that possible? So allow me just to talk uh, about humanity, about world history, about the Ummah, and about Turkey. Um, if I can have a little bit of um, chronology, uh, talk within that chronology, put somewhere renaissance, if you will. Um, talk about uh, within that list of chronology, not necessarily mutually exclusive from one another. So there might be overlappings, but for the lack of, uh, of a better uh, uh, word uh, for the uh, time uh, limitations, I think after Renaissance, one can talk about reformation, secularization of societies, uh, and um, enlightenment, indeed, 
uh, which goes hand in hand with secularization. And uh, of course, colonization um, and industrialization. And somewhere along the line, formation of nation states. Somewhere within that trajectory, with enlightenment uh, and secularization, we see the triumph of Western armies, if you will, and downfall of the Muslim achievements. I hate to say hegemony, which has connotations, but downfall of Muslims, just making generalizations. Uh, to pinpoint, uh, we can talk about dissolution of the caliphate, right? In the hands of Turks. Uh, with that, we know that domestication, marginalization, folklorization of religion ensued. Uh, and the Muslims are starting to feel like they are lagging behind. Around this time, we know that Muslim culture, Muslims through their perspective cultures, are being divested from what Islamic culture within their geographic demarcations meant before. They feel they are excluded from systems of representation. And they realize that they are losing their claim to universality. Of course, uh, whoever argues uh, within that camp uh, pinpoint to colonization uh, uh, as the uh, major reason for that, which uh, brought opposition to the West or imitation of the West. So with colonization in our respective regions, uh, opposition or imitation replication processes have started within local contexts. And from there, we move on to independence in these. Indeed. Uh, the opposition gave way to different movements in our respective regions. But the imitation gave way to this urge to catch up with the West. I come from a country where that was very prevalent. We grew up, we've been molded, we've been wired, if you will. Uh, the way we think has been constructed to this, with this hurry to catch up with the West. Um, that hurry moved Turkish Republic from the Orient, if you will, to the Occident through the modernization project. It was a top-down model that uh, was established uh, uh, in, in 1920s uh, through a social engineering processes. Uh, we molded the Turkish citizenry, the citizenship, from the Ummah to the Turkish nationalism, from the Orient or universalism of Islam to the parochialism limitations 
of the Occident, the West. Um, the facade of Westernization was prioritized. So as Turkish Republican people, we needed, we were encouraged, we were coerced to be westernized, modernized, Europeanized. And the facade of that was prioritized in a way that we were in a hurry to pick up the symbols of the Western lifestyle. Less interested in the content. Less interested in democracy, some of the values propagated by Western societies. But the appearance was very important. Uh, the the uh, headscarf ban, for instance, the hijab prohibition that has lasted around 30, 35 years since early 1980s in Turkey uh, was an emblematic of that approach of staunch westernization of the republic. So now, when I come to 2018, what we're trying to do as the Republic is, in a way, reinventing the wheel of idealism. Up until uh, 2002, until Erdogan came to power, but more so up until the last decade, uh, we've been a satellite state, very much caught in between the rock and the hard place, if you will, um, shadowing between superpowers, of course, Turkish. Uh, uh, affiliation and friendship and bodiness uh, with the United States of America and State of Israel uh, militarily uh, have uh, lasted for a very long time. Uh, it, over the decades, since 1920s. Uh, and uh, Turkey has not been an activator of foreign policy, but rather a reactor of foreign policy up until very recently. But now, with our new presidential view, outlook on life, we're attempting to move away from a realist and not so activist perspective of foreign policy to an idealist foreign policy immersed, ensconced, entrenched with the universal values of Islam. Of course, for students of political science, realism, the overarching, dominating theory of foreign policy of our world today looks at things from a Machiavellist perspective. You gotta do what you gotta do to get to wherever you have to get to, right? Based on maximization of power. Unlike realism, in idealism, the lofty goals of 
answering a calling, amr bil ma'ruf, nahi anil munkar. Trying to balance out of the austere face of realism through altruism. Doing something because it's the right thing to do, just for that purpose. Opening up your arms and embracing 3.5 million Syrians as not refugees, as guests. out of altruism, because it is the right thing to do. Through that idealist perspective, trying to reach to a collective good rather than individualistic utilitarianism, or better, opportunism. Rather than exploiting, standing for the right thing to do. So uh, we're experiencing, we are, and this is a work in progress, uh, a, a paradigm shift that Turkey is trying to put forth from within to without. It's a work in progress. How that's reflected on IR, international relations, on our foreign policy, again, this is not something new. Uh, uh, that's why I say reinventing the wheel of idealism. Reshaping, sort of updating it, to fit our needs within that very hectic region. Again, we're talking about Middle East, the cradle of all three monotheist religions. There's a fight over there, over history, over land, over culture, over everything. Everybody is coveting to that region. And this is not anything different than trying to uh, budge, shake, and change the Immanuel Wallerstein's um, world systems theory, something that uh, 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 Marx, uh, indeed, uh, has contributed to, where we have the core states, we have the peripheral states, we have the semi-peripheral states like the Turkish Republic in between, not necessarily uh, too poor, but not too, div too industrialized. And therefore, the core states continue to exploit the semi-peripheral and the peripheral states, trying to shake that system. Uh, we're trying to do that uh, through change. Change in what? First, change in perception. changing the perception of right from wrong, good and bad, acceptable and the unacceptable. Trying to make a change so that not just same lives and lives of some people matter, that all lives matter. 
Rohingya lives matter. Kashmiri lives matter. Palestinian lives matter as much as the lives of people who are uh, killed in attacks in France or, or Spain or London or New York. And all lives matter. We're trying to change doing our part, our humble part, a change in paradigm of terrorism. Why is it that Daesh is a terrorist organization while some other ex-organization that threatens some other people is not considered as one? Why is it that when an ex country inflicts horror and terror on other countries, people is not considered a terrorist country, but another one is considered as such? Why is it that we must cut a slack? time and again to State of Israel, despite the atrocities they carry out against humanity. Who calls the shots? Now, that, now, Turkey is defying. It's saying, hey, there is a, something wrong in the system. Why is it that we have to go with the uh, conceptualization of extremism prepared by a report at an ex country's parliament or congress, but not care about what Malaysian intellectuals promote? as moderation. Whose terrorism, whose extremism, whose moderation are we talking about? We're trying to change the perception of development. We look at the developed world, inflicted suffering under the caveats and the hazardous consequences of utter individualism? Why is it that we must follow the development trajectory of those so-called industrialized countries? And also, the kind of conceptualization of democracy where one fits all, kind of everything, including democracy, must be foisted upon peoples. Why is it that my democracy has to look exactly the same as your democracy? So we are trying to uh, challenge these through our political stance, through our intellectual discourse, and day-to-day -day lives. Why is it that we must also concede to two plus two equals to four? I'm, I'm a computer engineer from University of Texas in my past life, so I can crunch numbers. But I, I will challenge you to think about this. Is two plus two really adds up to four? 
Or could it be that it could be less than four or more than four? Think of the time of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he opens his doors to his guests, as his tradition does not permit him to return anybody empty handed. They come, they sit, eat and eat and eat. Where is the barakah in the very austere, naked, simple equation of two plus two amounting to four? Where is Nasrullah, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So indeed, two plus two would add to, could add to, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more than four. That's how the Turkish Republic is able to host their 3.5 some million Syrian guests at the moment. While we take on a superpower, United States of America, on the atrocities that it inflicts through various tools in different parts of the world. So strengthening our strategic ties and establishing new ones is the new foreign policy approach of the Republic of Turkey. In the past, as a one Muslim member of NATO trying to catch up with the European Union integration processes, all we had to do was to look at the West. And again, with that urgency, exigency of trying to catch up with them. But now, we say enough is enough. There is the West indeed, but there is the East. There is the North and the South. We must look all around and find new coalitions, new corporations, and foundations for further collaboration. Um, so political dialogue and cooperation with our neighbors, but also with the wider region is one important part of that enterprising, sagacious, and all-encompassing foreign policy of Turkey. Um, in Africa, we had only had 12 embassies up until 2002, between 1923 up until 2002. Why? Who cares about Africa? All we cared about was getting into EU. Again, trying to catch up with the West. Distancing ourselves from the Muslim East. Currently we have 41 embassies in Africa. Asia Pacific region was out out of our scope altogether. Now we have 15 embassies in this region. Latin America and Caribbean was not a concern. 
now we have uh, over 242 overall representation throughout the world. Uh, on humanitarian diplomacy, we do our best. And of course, this is part of our history and culture. Um, it goes without saying that uh, during um, Ferdinand and uh, Isabel's uh, uh, reign after the fall of the Muslim Spain Indonesia, in Indonesia, the Jews and the Christians sought refuge in the Turkish soils of the Ottoman Empire. The Irish under famine uh, in 1800s found the support of the Turks at the time. That goes without saying. That's the right thing to do. But for a very long time, we as part of the realist world have forgotten about the right thing to do. Of course, Turkish Red Crescent Society right now, Turkish NGOs are joining hands with the government to help out all needy, irrespective, independent of race, ethnicity, of culture, or religion. According to the Global Humanitarian Assistance Report, recently uh, uh, announced, Turkey ranks as the largest donor country worldwide with its over $8 billion humanitarian assistance in 2017 followed by United States and Germany and the United Kingdom and European Union. That could not be possible without the baraka Allah puts into our actions. Turkey is also the largest humanitarian donor when the ratio of official humanitarian assistance to national income is taken into consideration. That goes also without saying. Uh, the same report, the Global Humanitarian Assistance Report of 2017, also states that, of course, globally, Syrians, Yemenis, Iraqis, Palestinians, and Sudanese were the biggest recipients of this aid. Uh, from Niger to Chad, from Somalia to Mozambique, for, from Colombia to Georgia to Vietnam, Myanmar, Palestine and Syria, we try to join hands for the pleasement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need your duas, your prayers, and your, your supports. Thank you very much for being patient. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Her Excellency, for her officiating address. And also for the keynote speech, yes. And I would like to now uh, invite uh, our Her Excellency to uh,
to be uh, in front of uh, and on, top of, on the stage in front of us here. And then I would like to invite Professor Dr. Abdul Qayyum, accompanied by Dr. Abdul Kudus, to offer uh, the token of appreciation. Thank you, Her Excellency. Brothers and sisters, we have prepared outside some uh, exhibition booths presenting the departments under the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And this exhibition is organized to show research output, expert profiles, and other students' activities of different departments under the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And we have now reached the end of the ceremony. Thus, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Abdul Qayyum and Her Excellency, uh, accompanied by all the VIPs, to visit the exhibition booths and have some light refreshments. Thank you very much, MC. I have just one housekeeping announcement. We have covered the keynote speech one, so our parallel session would be as usual. There will be not, uh, no keynote speech right after the refreshment. So please find your venues. Uh, in a, uh, it's in the IRK building. Our volunteers are outside there. So right after the visiting the booth and having your refreshment, find your uh, parallel session venues and relax and enjoy. Thank you very much.